Hey, everybody. How's it going? Justin Reed here with the uh, Black Soccer Membership Association podcast. I uh, just hope everybody's having a uh, good uh, Martin Luther King uh, day. Um, it is a day to reflect on a person who um, started a movement, you know, during the civil rights. And I mean, he has, he did, you know, just amazing things, you know, to help us get to where we are um, as a race and, of course, try to bring equality uh, to the world. Um, you know, equality that is, of course, questionable today. But um, I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys real quick about um, DC United's uh, new hiring. Um, to me, uh, it's just another slap in the face for uh, Black, uh, you know, assistant soccer coaches here who are in uh, Major League Soccer. Um, this, this is the second time in about two months that an Argentine uh, coach has now landed here in the league. And I don't know if it's to meet the Major League Soccer uh, 2007 diversity initiative, because uh, I mean, you could still kind of classify Argentinians uh, as being white, you know, so I don't know if this, there's a loophole there, seeing that they are also Latin. Um, and that's kind of why we're now starting to see uh, more Latin coaches. Um, now, I'm not against the coaches coming here, I'm kind of more against the, 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 the teams and the clubs and kind of their decisions. And um, Pretty much what I'm seeing, you know, it just seems like um, Major League Soccer, specifically Atlanta United and DC United, going down the road of the Argentine coach, they're kind of looking for the next uh, Tata Martino. And um, when you look at Tata's record uh, prior to joining Atlanta, he was the um, I think he was the Argentinian coach for a couple of years, uh, and he also coached uh, 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 Barcelona. You know, so he has a great track record of you know being a high level coach. And it just seems like that's kind of what they're looking for, for uh, the new coaches that they've hired. So I previously talked about uh, uh, Gabriel Heinze, who, believe it or not, has no relationship with uh, uh, Tata Martino, although he played with him. Um, I did watch the, uh, uh, the press conference after he got the job with Atlanta. And um, it's just pretty much, you know, kind of the same thing. So today, DC United, they hired um, a coach named Hernan Lasado. And he is, uh, he's about 38 years old uh, and very similar to uh, Gabriel Heinze. He has zero playing experience in, in Major League Soccer. Um, and uh, with him, he actually coached in Belgium. So he actually played in Belgium as well. And he just kind of bounced around the leagues. He bounced around the Argentinian League and the Belgium League. Um, and he, you know, coached about 42 games. I see his record here. He had 20 wins, nine draws and, uh, um, sorry, nine losses and 13 draws, you know, so 47% win percentage. But, you know, if you take out like the actual losses, like the nine losses, you know, you know, 20 wins, nine losses and, and, and 13 ties. All right. Not a bad record. But what I don't understand is um, these coaches don't really have the real experience that they need, I think, to coach in Major League Soccer. And seeing that there are black coaches who are assistants here, uh, Edra, uh, for example, uh, Ezra Hendrickson, you know, I brought him up before. Um, Ezra's fairly young still. I think he's in his prime for coaching. He's 49 years old. Uh, he has played in the league for about 12 seasons. He won three championships as a player. And then as a coach, you know, he's been coaching for about uh, 11 years, uh, bouncing around between the Galaxy, the Sounders, and right now with Columbus Crew. And he's won uh, two championships, you know. So I really don't know what else um, a coach has to show, assistant coach has to show on his resume in order to uh, land at least an interview with a um, with a club. You know, now maybe he did uh, land in, in an interview with DC United. I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure. I did see an article that did state that he um, was in the running to actually be um, the head coach of the team. But of course, you see the decision that they made today. They decided to go with someone with uh, very little coaching experience. Uh, he had only been in Belgium for a year. And then you can also look at a, uh, another coach. His name is uh, Tyrone Marshall. He is from Jamaica, and he has been in Major League Soccer. He was uh, about 14 years as a player. He, he at least won one uh, championship I could find. And he's been an assistant coach at uh, Real Salt Lake, you know, for about six years. Uh, another guy, you know, again, 46 years old in his prime and no opportunities for uh, a head coaching job. You know, so it just kind of makes you wonder, you know, what Major League Soccer is really doing. You know, I uh, consider this another slap in the face um, for black coaches. And um, I just don't quite know exactly what is the best route 
for these coaches next? Are they kind of going to be like um, the guys in the um, USL, you know? And of course, you know, no offense to those guys at all. They love the game. They have a passion for it. But the reality is uh, some of them will probably never make it to uh, MLS, you know? So they're probably going to be in the USL until they retire. And that's kind of how things are kind of shaping up with uh, coaches right now, at least the black coaches who are the assistants who've played in the league, who coached the league for a very long time. Are these guys going to be assistants until they decide that they don't want to coach anymore? Or are these guys actually going to uh, receive a head coaching job, you know, at some point? And again, it's not a matter of, you know, these guys begging for a position. Like these guys are totally qualified for a position. But DC United and Atlanta United, they continue to uh, bring in, you know, coaches, I guess, maybe to meet their 2007 uh, diversity initiative. But coaches, to me, I believe, just aren't very experienced. Um, I guess they want to play some high tempo Argentinian way and an Argentinian style. I have watched the Argentinian league, um, and I don't think it's a very high tempo league, if you ask me. You got some good players, but, um, you know, overall, it's just uh, another South American league. You know, so again, I don't quite know what angle uh, Major League Soccer's taken, um, but I just feel as though uh, the opportunities for black coaches uh, in this league is just going to be really, really, really tough. And it just kind of makes you open your eyes again. And, you know, this kind of goes back to opportunity. And I know I've spoken about um, the Caribbean before and how the federations are set up. It's just a shame that a person like Ezra, you know, who was the assistant coach, I believe, at St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, that he can't just say, hey, you know, to hell with this. You know, I've done what I can do here in Major League Soccer. I'm just going to go back home and I'm going to go coach and uh, coach a national team and see if I can take them to the World Cup, you know. But without any structure in the St. Vincent and the Grenadines from their FAs, that just makes it really, really tough. And you could say the same thing with Tyrone. Tyrone's from Jamaica. Um, I mean... What do you say about Jamaica? I mean, yeah, I mean, I can go back again to 2019 when uh, Hugh Menzies took the women's team to the World Cup and, you know, he didn't get paid. You know, his assistant didn't get paid either. So it's like, you know, if I'm Tyrone Marshall, am I going to leave a situation uh, at Real Salt Lake that has been consistent, at least financially? You know, it may not it may not be consistent in terms of him getting a head coaching job, but at least it's been consistent financially. That was kind of be like a step down to go to the JFF not knowing if you're going to get paid, not knowing what the structure is going to be. So again, you know, I really do hope that um, Caribbean uh, federations are listening to this, you know, because we've got a lot of talented uh, head coaches out here in the U.S. And I don't know Ezra personally. I don't know Tyrone personally. Uh, I met Ezra like briefly one time years ago at a convention. And, you know, it wasn't a long conversation. It was, hey, how's it going? And, 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 and bye. And that's it. So um, I, again, I don't know these guys personally, so I'm not really advocating on their behalf. I'm just kind of bringing it to light that there are black coaches in major league soccer at the assistant role who have been extremely successful over the years, but we have another off season. The uh, preseason for the league comes up fairly soon. Um, that's going to happen, uh, I guess within the next month or so, they'll all get together. They'll go to Florida. They'll do their, their spring training. And then their season starts in March. And so we have another off season. And I believe at this point, all the positions uh, for the head coaching roles have been filled. So uh, Ezra and Tyrone just got to wait another year, see what happens. But um, yeah, it, uh, again, Major League Soccer just don't quite know what these clubs are doing. Anyway, hope everyone has a great day. Um, you guys, uh, we have a lot of great uh, episodes coming up. So definitely um, look out for the uh, the Black Soccer Membership Association podcast. This week I had um, Sabrina and Alexi Geraldino. They are the founders of the New Jersey Teamsters. I, I had them on the show, so uh, definitely look out for that. And I also had a great um, discussion with uh, Kenya Cordner. Uh, Kenya Cordner is the Offensive uh, Player of the Year in the uh, Norwegian Super League. Um, and she is just an outstanding player. And we had just had a great talk about her time with the uh, Trinidad and Tobago Football Association. So definitely read up on, definitely not read up on it, but definitely follow up and uh, take a look at the interviews and we'll make sure to post it um, as soon as they are available. All right, so hope everyone has a great evening and I'll see you all on the BSMA podcast.